wait to roast one of my heroes. <laughs> Can't wait. All right, what's up guys? It's Anna with Pro Watercraft, and I'm here today with Jet Ski Legend, Larry Rippin Grover, and we are gonna do story time with Larry. I have a small stack of images I just went on the internet, I googled Larry Rippin Kroger, and I pulled whatever I could find. <laughs> Larry has not seen any of these images, he has no idea what's in the stack, and I'm going to show them to him, and we're going to get story time. What was happening in these photos? Are you ready? I can hardly wait. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. <laughs> Alright, I knew, you already knew this one was going to be in here. Okay. This is the one. Oh, yeah. This is the one I see on the internet all the time. Mm. And we'll flip it this way also. Oh, yes. So, yeah. first of all, tell me how it happened. Um, well, Kirker acquired the Super Trap company. So then they were both all combined. And they had an in-house advertising department. And this was their brainstorm. So you, you didn't... You didn't come up with this idea? No, no. I so you was didn't... just a happy volunteer at the time. And... Um, yeah, we shot that in their photo studio in Sacramento. So you're not actually on the water? No, no? it's all green screen. In That's fact, was it was it even a might have been a blue screen back then? But yeah. Um, can I? Are you actually wearing seaweed? I don't recall if they had seaweed Did shorts you block for that out? I don't <laughs> recall. And are are you actually holding her up? I am. Was she heavy? No, I mean look at the. She's pretty thin. She's pretty small. Yeah. Did you guys go on a date? No. No. Okay. No. But I do have. Um, is it the same girl? It is the same girl, and there's do you another. You remember her name? Oh, you don't remember. Her. <laughs> <laughs> no, there is another Kirker ad that I have a, but it's where I'm holding the super trap exhaust and it's smoking and I look like. I Bill, think I've seen Bill, that one where Billy you look so ripped. Yeah, that one they put a little smoke charge in there, and that thing when it went off, it shot a flame out there and burned the whole palm on my hand so I had to put my hand on ice for the rest of the day in between shots oh, and everything yes. so I don't have seriously. any I don't have any backstory to this one but, um, it was just a fun before story. this came to fruition did they warn you that you were going to be dressed up as a merman or did you just show up and you were no like, oh. I just showed up and had no idea what we were doing other than just so print. they didn't say like hey we want you to be a mermaid it was like hey we want you in an ad surprise yeah. you're yeah. a mermaid yeah we got this idea bring your ski and that's, that's pretty much it. This is iconic though. Like, don't get it twisted. I'm not making fun of it. Like this is legendary, but it's just like, we don't have ads like this anymore. No, we don't. no. This is awesome. That's a classic. Yeah. All right, here's a fun one. This one won't be hard to see on camera, but Larry will know exactly what it is. Ah, uh, yes. What is, this is, you look like you're uh, jet skiing to maybe like a garbage dump. What are we, <laughs> what's going on here? This is from the Waterworld live show at Universal Studios. This was my, uh, Next big gig after the Waterworld movie is I helped put the show together and then stayed on and played the Kevin Costner character. I was going to say, you're wearing the pants. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you were the Mariner. Yes. And the cool thing about the little backstory is when we did the grand opening show for the press before the audience got to see it, mm -hmm. um, they had this whole press corps coming in and they had wardrobe they brought over from the movie and everything. So I got to actually wear Kevin Costner's actual, actual wardrobe. Did you fit in it? Yes, you close, en ripped. close enough. And um, yeah, I won't get in trouble for this now. But I told um, at the end of the day, I was giving everything back to the wardrobe person. I said, yeah, Waterworld was my first movie. And I didn't know what I could get away with, like taking for souvenirs when the movie was over. And I wish I had grabbed a few things, you know, but I didn't want to get in trouble. Oh, put in the bag. <laughs> and so she was so cool. She kind of like looked around and made sure the coast was clear and she... So I have now one of Kevin Costner's. You still have it? Still have it, and that will be in my office when I finally get my Waterworld display That's down really this side. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, there's a story. All right, we got two more. Uh, could you tell me who this person is? Ah. Who is this man? <laughs> that's, uh, that's you. That's me, and that's Bruce Willis. Um, Are you guys related? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce and I, uh, we had a great run up. Bruce's personal stunt double for about 10 years. Where was this photo taken? This was in Budapest, and this was the beginning of Die Hard 5, which was really great because the last time I had seen Bruce, Bruce, he uh, was on Die Hard 4. He came to the hospital to visit me when I was all busted up, and then I went back the final week that we were shooting Die Hard 4, but I was so skinny and frail. 
that I couldn't uh, really do anything. But that was the last time I'd seen him. And then, much to my surprise, it's five or six years later, he announced a new Die Hard, and I got invited back to be his double. And this was, I was working on second unit, the big action unit, and he was on first unit. And so, on this day, they needed everybody to come to first unit, and it was, it was great because he sent uh, one of the PAs over and to all the stunt guys and said, "Is there a Larry Rippenbroger here?" He said, Mr. Willis would like to see you. And so I walked over. You're like, oh, yeah. no big deal. <laughs> so, yeah, see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, as I walked over, we're out in public and they're setting up the next shot and he sees me coming. He just yells at the top of his lungs, Larry Rippin Kroger! And, You're like, that's me. Really <laughs> embraced me and it was just oh, made me so feel awesome. really welcome to be back. And then um, that was the show I just I really redeemed myself and kicked ass and won a Taurus Award for her. Won a Award. Great way to, to close that chapter. And are you guys like bros still? Like, how would you like? Oh would yeah, you we're still chit chat. Definitely on good terms. I his right hand man, producer, partner. We still talk a lot. Bruce mm -hmm. is a still a busy guy, still working a lot, and uh, I'm changing directions. I I don't want to jinx anything, but I've got a movie. I'm going to reach out to Bruce down the road. And I've got okay. a movie for him that I hope to direct, and who knows, I could be directing Bruce. I mean, you guys still look alike, so, yeah. I mean, there's a chance for a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, so awesome. Yeah, that was Bruce pretty Willis cool. Bruce and the Larry Rubin program. They cool. could be brothers. They really could. It was a cool gig. All right, last one, and probably my favorite one. Um, were you ah. auditioning for the Blue Man Group? <laughs> were you the sixth yeah. member I of was, the Blue Man Group? I to hit drums with Mel This is Larry Rubin <laughs> program, but blue. <laughs> What, what's happening here? Uh, that's another one of my favorite, all-time favorite movie-making experiences, Guardian of the Galaxy 2. This is uh, me doubling Yondu. You look just like him. Yes, uh, it was amazing what they can do. Um, but that was three hours of makeup. I was, had, you just sitting in a chair the whole time? 4 a.m. call times, I would go and sit in a chair and just zone out. I did, a couple times did nod off a little bit, but by seven o'clock, now I'm, looking like this and, and ready to go to work. Um, just the coolest experience. Um, did they hot glue this to your head? How did that work out? It's, it's glued. And the thing about this, this was a plot point that was top secret because he gets shot with this short, um, whatever you would call that, fin. Mm -hmm. And this long one is some kind of a big plot point they were really trying to keep secret from the public. So. Hmm. When I would come out of the, the makeup building, they'd have an escort with me and they would cover me up in a poncho and cover the wardrobe. And then I would have a, an umbrella over my head and to where I could just look under it to hide the, the fan on my head because there was paparazzi. Yeah, they were hiding out in the trees outside the lot. Wow. And um, yeah, we had to keep that top secret. So, craziest stunt when you were blue? Um, didn't do a lot of crazy stuff. There was. A lot of wire work. We we did a fair amount of green screen stuff, and they had like the floor and a couple of the backdrops would be real, but then it would just be a giant green screen behind it. But um, so I was on wires a lot. And I was flying, flying through the air, air and doing some fights. And I did one scene was kind of cool where uh, he rescues Chris Pratt's character. So they actually put Chris in there, and I came swinging down on the cables and we had, he was on cables too and it was timed with these electric winches that right when I got to him, his would pull him too, but I had to grasp him, look like I'm flying him away, so, and Chris Peratt is just the coolest guy out yeah. there, he was just, like, you know, having a good time with the whole thing. Um, probably the, the only thing that really scared me on that was, uh, I still have a slight issue with heights after my injury on Iron mm -hmm. 4 yeah. and uh, one morning, first shot up, put on a harness underneath your wardrobe and then they hooked me to cables on each hip and then they took me up all the way to the rafters of the, the sound stage, I don't know, 50 foot up or so. And as you get up there and it comes to the end, it kind of bounces and when it does that, you hear this tearing going on and it's, and it's just your wardrobe settling adjusting, in, adjusting yeah. and it's tearing the wardrobe, the cables are, but... Not a fan. Not a fan of that, yeah. It's like, one more, we're done. Yeah, yeah. But um, that was pretty much just nothing but fun. So playing, being blue wasn't so bad? No. Better was, than the blue man group? Yeah, oh, no, definitely. And uh, it was like, the only downside was the three hours in the morning. They got it down to about two and a half hours at the time. 
but it was an hour to get out of it and then but it, was it just your head or was your whole body built? Uh, anything that you could see outside the water. So mm -hmm. it would be like down here and then the whole head. And then I had... What about hands? Blue hands? Yeah, blue hands. And then um, these gnarly false teeth that they, they took your person to my teeth and made these gangly teeth. You had that pretty, he had. like scary teeth. And and then, they don't have dentists in space. Yeah, nice. and then red uh, contact lenses. So I had to get used oh. to wearing contacts, which I'd never done before, mm -hmm. which was interesting when you're trying to do fight scenes and you got all this stuff Weird. going on and you lose your depth perception and all that hmm. so a lot of adjustment but and then you know on the weekends after you've been out of this for a few days you're still like finding you can go a q-tip and you're like still find it blue you, you go to the store and they're like you got some blue yeah. on you <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome yeah. so harder than jet skis easier uh that's easier yeah how about harder than jet skis or easier uh do you get blown up Oh yeah, there was, you know, with with stunts, there were a, a lot of days where you're just a glorified extra, and then there were a lot of days where you're just you're getting ready to go, and your heart's pounding so hard, and you're just going, "What am I doing? This is, if any one thing goes bad, you're dead." And it's like, "What am I? Why am I doing this?" You know? mm -hmm. So, uh, different difficulty, a different way with with the stress and the fear and, and everything you but have to overcome. Time. Yeah, I think anybody who's raced and been on that starting line. And you feel that adrenaline, and you know it's Damn. coming. Yeah, you that that trains you to do something like this because you know you have to overcome that fear or that that anxiety to, to get to that next point. So yeah, it's good training. Well, that wasn't so bad. I think Larry was worried that I had like some dirt on him or something. He looked a little scared when I told him that I had a bunch of pictures I was going to show him. Yeah, I was concerned. That was really cool. Story time with Larry Ripping Kroger. We had a great time. You'll want to check out Pro Watercraft Racing on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, if you don't like cool jet ski stuff, if you don't like hearing stories from the coolest people in the jet ski sport, don't subscribe. It's not the crowd for you. Uh, if you do, you'll want to check us out because we're going to have a lot more cool content like this coming soon.